on today's ChurchTechCast.com screencast show, making an interactive projection display with ProPresenter 6. to the churchtechcast.com screencast show. This is the show where every week I help you with the software that we use in the church, which over the next couple of weeks isn't only going to be ProPresenter, but we'll talk about that in just a second. My name's Paul Allen Clifford. So what you may or may not know is that I spent the last week at SALT 2016, which is a church tech arts leadership kind of conference. And one of the great things that they did, and I'll show you a little bit of this video, is they had a wall that was an interactive display. So you would hit a button on the wall, and it was a 3D printed button. It wasn't, you know, like a um, old-fashioned uh, arcade button or something like that. It was something that it didn't seem like it should do anything, and yet it did. And it would do it over and over again, same thing. So I thought that we would take a look at my idea of how you would do that in ProPresenter 6. I'm told they may have done this in Pro, Vid Pro Video Player, but I think the principle is very similar. And then next week, I'll show you how to create the controlling mechanism for it. And hopefully, if all things go well, the following week I'll show you how to actually make the button itself. So this is a three-part thing. Uh, first part is going to be here in uh, ProPresenter. Then next week we're going to talk about Arduino and Makey Makey. And then the following week we're going to talk about doing some 3D printing and some other interesting things. So in the meantime, let's head over to my computer and we'll take a look. Imagine that this is projected on your wall. Of course, you wouldn't have the logo here from ProPresenter, but I'm using the, um, the evaluation version here at home. So you're at church, you've got a multi-site uh, or a you have the site license, and this is projected on your wall, and then when you click on one of these, then you find that these different things show up. And if you leave it for a certain amount of time, then they go away. So that's also pretty cool. So all four of them have that uh, built in. It's not the case that you have to click anything. I didn't hit any buttons. I didn't click anything, etc. So let me show you how I did that. Um, and then this is actually going to be a multi-part series, but I think it will help you um, to see what's going on here. So first off, we have the background layer. Background layers are pretty simple. I can uh, very easily just switch to a different background layer, and we're good to go. So I just pick that at random. No big deal. Next thing you need to do is you need to have this layer that stays up all the time. There's a couple ways you can do that. You can edit that into the background layer but that really doesn't give you as much flexibility as perhaps that you'd like. So what can you put into ProPresenter that stays up all the time, no matter what slides you go to? How about a prop? So that's what I did. I went to Actions, uh, actually View, and then Props, and I created a new prop here. This is that prop. Let's take a look at what I did in here. Uh, first off, I have used these guidelines, which you can get by dragging from the number bar up here, to help me position everything as I want it to be positioned. I put the text on the left here, um, 
and actually I want to maybe get it a little bit more like that. Now I go into text here and I don't think I actually had a um, an outline on this so I'm going to add an outline of Hold on. Okay, so I'm going to add an outline of one just to help it pop from the background. And that's good to go. I can also do that with these shapes. Now, you might be thinking, well, Paul, how did you create that? Because if you click up here, you get a rectangle, and these are diamonds. It's actually using, this is the I believe the only feature in ProPresenter 6 that's required. Other than that, you can use this, do this in ProPresenter 5, and you could absolutely create PNG files of these shapes um, or just use rectangles, you know, whatever. Um, so I clicked on that, and now that I'm down here, I can just draw a simple shape. I like that, and now I need to fill that. I go over here, fill color, change that fill color. In this case, I had it as white, and that did it. I just copied uh, using Command C or Edit Copy. They both work, and pasted it. Command V or edit paste, you know, whatever, and then I move those all in. So let me go ahead and remove those. Um, I also noticed as I was just looking at this that um, the line color is also white. So let's also um, make that line color black, shall we, just to help it pop a little bit. So. Ideally, I would have done this as I created the first one and then just copied and pasted it. But I'm just going back here with you through this. So it it's still pretty straightforward to do. So you see that I, I'm just going through here and turning this into a black outline. So um, now we can show that. And let's turn on the output, and you can now see that it pops a little bit more from the background now that I have a line around the text and a line here. So that's good. Let me get rid of that. So that is the prop that is here. So that is always present. So basically every other slide is transparent. It doesn't have anything in it whatsoever. So that's pretty cool. Now for this um, outline box, that's just a lyric, just like you would normally see. So let's uh, uh, click Edit Slide here. And now that we've, we're, the slide is being edited, we can just see that that's basically what I did was I created a template that put a small box around the text that I typed in here. So pretty straightforward. I tweaked it just to get it to sit right. Use these guidelines again that you can drag from there. And then once you get you can re pretty straightforward. Um, the other thing that I, there are two other things that I did to really sell this effect. The next is under, um, no it's actually not under text properties. It is right here under this guy. You see hotkey? So I changed the hotkey to A. Could be any letter on your keyboard. Depends on how you're triggering this. Um, but eventually in a subsequent tutorial, I'm going to show you a way to trigger this in real life 
without using a keyboard, you could absolutely have a keyboard there that you say, you know, click this letter to go to the next one, or, you know, you could even have just a giant space bar that cycles through them in order. But this makes it to where you can go A, S, D, F in any order, and those are triggered by buttons, which we're going to talk about in a later uh, episode, a later tutorial. But one thing I also added in is I added a go to next timer that after 15 seconds makes this go away. So let me show you this effect as well. You'll notice that it, the whole thing comes in from the left. That's, again, something that can be done in ProPresenter 5 or 6 because this whole slide is pushing in. So, and you saw that it just went to a blank slide. When you're looking at the full screen, you can't tell that this blank slide is different from this blank slide from this blank slide. It's just the same. So if I have that one, if I have A going, and then I go to D, it replaces it. Uh, if I then decide I want to go to S, and then F, so you see how this all works. Pretty straightforward, uh, pretty obvious. And these are just transitions. You'll notice that I'm using the push transition down here, but I could have chosen any transition for this. Um, so this pushes in from the left. Very straightforward. Um, I could have done, um, well, let's do a fly in. So um, let's do that. And so now, now you see how they fly in from here. I could do that as well. So that is just the transition, which normally I dissuade people from using that in worship. But if you're doing this in your church service, in your church service, not so good. For a display in the lobby, for maybe digital signage for the kids, etc., this would absolutely work. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a projector, by the way. This could easily be a uh, flat screen TV with buttons underneath it where the um, these little arrows point up and then you press a button underneath and the things show up. Just use your imagination. Um, but this is a really easy thing to do in ProPresenter 6 that looks really, really cool. Um, and I think once we get done with this series, you'll just think of a lot of uses for this. Um, and quite frankly, some of you are probably going to want to upgrade from just a single uh, ProPresenter instance to the site license just for this because it's really not all that, that much money and you can use this all over campus and it looks like you spent tens of thousands of dollars where the software was just a little bit more money than it's a computer and then a couple other parts. So um, hope that that helps you. Well, wasn't that interesting? So by using hotkeys and props in backgrounds in just the right way, you can make something seem interactive. Now, of course, people aren't in there entering in their own information. There's a lot of things. But you do have the ability to make it seem like you hit a button and something comes in. You hit any other button and something else comes in. Non-linearly, while most people might go one, two, three, four, they could very easily go two, four, three, one, or 
any combination thereof. So that's something pretty neat. Uh, one thing I should mention, look for a link um, in below the video in the description because I'm going to let you download everything that I can from this. So if you're interested in getting the files that I made in ProPresenter for this, and I'm not 100% sure every piece that's going to be in there, but I'll let you have every piece that I can. Probably not the backgrounds, but uh, maybe some template files and such. Then go over to tdm.fyi slash interactive projection. That's a new link, uh, TDM, short for Trinity Digital Media. FYI, for your information, there's no .com, .org, anything like that. It's just tdm.fyi slash interactive projection, all one word, and that'll take you to the link for this particular video and where you can download that uh, ProPresenter project. Until next time, this is Paul Allen Clifford with TrinityDigitalMedia.com. Go out and change eternity.